For each of man's evils, a special demon exists. Hello children, this is Bitch I Ain't Scared, and it's finally fucking October. Yeah! And it's pizza month. What's, okay, this is the first time I've ever heard this before. I've never knew that pizza, well, okay, do you know why it's pizza mm. month for October? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> he is eating pizza right now. But, yeah. I don't know, last year I found out, you know when they got these random ass holidays, like, yeah. oh, it's National Taco Day, and it's like, okay, whatever. It just is. It's also National Boyfriend Day. But pizza gets a month. Yeah. But what happened- Well, there's like a pizza day somewhere, too, yeah. but this is pizza month. So what happened in October that makes it pizza month? Because it's the greatest fucking month of the year. <laughs> Preach. Yeah. No, it is finally October. I am super excited. Mm -hmm. This is our first October. It we got to make it a good one. This is our sort of debut. It's already a good one. I can feel it. Yes. Yeah. We um, picked some really good topics for the month, and we have some other sort of different stuff coming in that we're going to try out. So, yeah, I'm excited. I just wanted to say one thing. Because clowns, you know, we did it. But I didn't tell you this, and maybe you already heard. The day that we posted the episode, Wednesday, I came across this news story about a killer clown. No, I didn't hear about this. So, this happened 27 years ago. 27, um, really? 27 years ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's a hoax, but I don't <laughs> think so. So, killer clown case leads to woman's arrest 27 years later. Um, this woman was having an affair. She was the other woman. She dressed up as a clown, walked up to the front door with balloons and candy in hand, and as she's passing this stuff off to the woman that answered the door, she shoots her in the face, calmly walks back to her car, and rolls off. And th I think they caught this on like security camera footage but they just couldn't prove it was her without a shadow of a doubt. She was suspect number one, but they just couldn't prove it. Well, yeah, I mean, she's covered in makeup and everything, so... Finally, I don't... You'd have to read the whole case. I'll share the article, but she did it. They caught her. She had moved from Florida, where she committed the murder, to Virginia, and she remarried the man. <laughs> so I was like, that, could, that seems kind of like... Did he have something to do with it? Yeah, that? for him to easily like, go back to her oh, like My wife that. was shot in the face. Well, yeah. it's okay. I'll just marry this broad. So, I don't know. But, yep. Wow. That was just really weird that that happened. So, anyway, that concludes clowns for now. Yeah. We'll return. Oh, yeah. And so, horror rule number 385... Yes, people <laughs> give surprises to your loved ones, but if you honestly think your man or woman is sending you gifts from a clown at I, I don't even know if it was in the evening or whatnot be a little broad daylight be a little cautious about opening the door and accepting gifts you have no idea is coming i mean leave it at the door and you know i'll i'll, I'll pick it up thank you very much unless it's donuts <laughs> yeah don't don't call the police on them. That's a legitimate business. But that's 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 too bad. Yeah. So that was just crazy. Um. So I'm just gonna tell you a little about my day. Um. Angelica Houston. She just keeps coming back into my life. <laughs> nice. She showed up again. She did. She was interviewed today. It was amazing. Also, not really in the horror spectrum, but Ava DuVernay was there who was that she's the director producer of the documentary 13 on netflix and also the upcoming a wrinkle in time oh nice okay so they showed the trailer again which you know i don't like to watch trailers but this trailer is fucking superb it because looks amazing all it does is like hype me up and all of my cells are just tingling because they really don't show you anything even if you're familiar with the book it's like <laughs> I don't know what's going on and I this book is like from childhood but what it did do is remind me of how scary the book was to me it's not a like horror novel for children not really but there's the darkness and 
it's a really creepy element. I don't know why it terrified me as a kid, but it definitely brought that back today while I was at work and I was like, no. But the movie looks fucking awesome. So that's what I'll be doing for my birthday in case anybody wants to join. Does it come out like on the actual day? or No, it comes out like seven days before my birthday. Oh. But you know. Yeah, we all have birthday months, mm-hmm. birthday weeks, whatever. Yep. So that's cool. Yeah, uh, Wrinkle Time does look pretty cool. Uh, I did not read the book, uh, but this movie looks great and it has tons of really good people in it too. So it does like women all over the place. I mean, the, all the characters are female. The writer Madeline Ellingold is a woman. So yeah, it's amazing. It's really amazing. But um, yeah, I'm really excited. And also, I messed up before when I didn't say happy birthday to Jada on air. So I just want to make sure everyone knows. <laughs> It's Nev Campbell's birthday, October 3rd, Nev Campbell's birthday. October 4th is Anne Rice's birthday. So I just want to, you know, give a little shout out before I forget. <laughs> yes, uh, Nev Campbell. I actually had a crush on her yeah. when I was younger during my uh, party of five days. Ah. Yeah. No, I always thought she she was a looker before I knew what was really going on. But yeah, always been a fan of her. So mm-hmm. yeah, happy birthday, Nev. I just found out she's doing um, a thriller with The Rock. <laughs> You're kidding. Nope. I they're did not be, hear about this. I think it's called Skyscraper. Okay. But yeah, they're a married couple and some shit goes down in the skyscraper and they have to like fight for their lives. So I'm looking forward to that. All right. I'll be down for that. I'll have to look that up. Trying not to crunch. Anyway, welcome to October. As you guys know, it's business as usual on the uh, first week. I'm going to take you through a little roller coaster ride of emotions. And um, what would you like to do first, Rob? We should do Netflix okay. really quick. Uh, so, yeah, we like to talk about some of the stuff that's being released on Netflix for you horror fans out there who can't afford Prime and refuse to download stuff illegally. These movies are for free. That's me. Give or take. So, some of the ones that popped up, um, so I believe tomorrow, the 4th, uh, Raw is going to be on Netflix. Uh, yeah, I heard it was pretty gross, but I also heard it was... You can't do it pretty good i heard this movie was, I heard really, it was good. really good but I just, yeah oh god i don't know i'm prepared i can't wait i don't know <laughs> but yeah so uh definitely look for that that's on the fourth uh right now i'm sure all of you have um seen that cult of chucky has been released onto netflix as well uh, also the Blu-ray, and it's on video on demand. I actually had the pleasure of watching this before today's recording, so here's just a early tidbit that it is a very good sequel. Better than the last one? Better? Well, okay. The uh, These two movies, I think, go together as far as tone. A mm. lot of people might disagree because you still get this wisecracking sort of comedy-like Chucky. And yes, the first two were more on the horror side of things. So they did not revert back to how it used to used to be. But it is not a hard-blown like comedy that you would get from like Seed of Chucky or Bride of Chucky, which is nothing wrong with those installments. But Curse of Chucky, I think, found a balance to where you can still put in the good scares, the good kills, and still have it be a horror movie and not like a full-blown horror comedy. I actually don't look at this installment as a horror comedy. Yes, he does talk a lot of shit, but I mean, look at the um, Nightmare on Elm Street franchises. I don't think there's anybody who calls any of those sequels horror comedies, even though he talks a lot of shit in all of them. They're full-blown horror movies. So, to me, that's that's what this is. But there was a huge new element that was thrown in. I don't think that any of the other movies alluded to this specific thing 
but when it is brought to you and explained you either will hate it or you will actually love what they're doing it is so different than what we've seen and everything just kind of makes sense down to the title down to how the previous movie ended because it was really confusing how the other one ended and I, I was just really impressed with how unique and different this one was but again it's a concept that might not be welcomed very much so but i loved it i thought this was a really good movie also make sure that you're watching this on blu-ray or um video on demand maybe amazon i'm not sure but avoid netflix i'm not saying that it's not good to watch it on netflix but there is a specific difference between what you see on blu-ray and what you see on netflix apparently the netflix version is rated while blu-ray is unrated so about a minute maybe a minute and a half is not in the movie i also don't know exactly like the level of gore or you know like kills is put on here and the amazing jaw dropping post credit sequence at the end is not on netflix and you want to see the post credit sequence especially you nate you are going to love it me i think so okay i think so all right but yes cult of chucky check it out highly recommend it from uh the scholar here um some other ones that i thought were worth mentioning is uh friday the 13th has two movies that caught my eye uh on netflix this horror comedy called the babysitter it's um a babysitter who babysits this boy preteen and she invites a whole bunch of friends over but apparently her and her friends i guess worship the devil and they perform human sacrifices to appease the devil and i guess that this innocent boy that she's babysitting is the next victim and then shit hits the fan hijinks ensues yada 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 i watched the trailer and it looks so freaking funny and it's got uh bella thorne in it um robbie armel and uh i forget her name i apologize but you saw pitch perfect right yeah so you know the uh girl who never speaks but she can be box <laughs> She like she never says a word. Yeah. She's so soft spoken, but she knows how to beatbox. Yeah, like, no, I yeah, know, I know who she is. Yeah. She's in it as well, which I'm sure we'll be able to hear her speak more than one word this time. So I hope so. It looks so funny, and I'm I'm so I'm pretty excited about it. But it's called The Babysitter. Mick G, who I guess is known for directing the Charlie's Angels remake. Uh, he directed this movie. So doesn't he do Supernatural too? He did... Or he did in the beginning. Yes, he did in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm excited for that. <laughs> See also, how long it's been since I watched it. <laughs> also in theaters uh, on Friday the 13th is Happy Death Day, which I'm excited for, too. You've heard of this. Is that the one where the girl like keeps dying? And she yes. To figure, okay. Yeah, yeah it's like the looks... horror movie Groundhog Day sort of yeah. thing. That yeah. looks pretty fun, that too, looks so I'm excited for that. And uh, in TV, there's... Um, two sci-fi shows well actually no just one sci-fi show that i want to bring up is ghost wars which is kind of like the movie odd thomas that i told you about just this guy who has a gift of seeing like ghosts and whatever yeah um that show looks promising i'm gonna check it out that actually premieres on the 5th which i believe is um on thursday yeah yeah so i'm gonna check that out uh the mist season one will be on netflix on the 24th already yeah i know right so check that out if you had any interest of watching it and then uh of course stranger things at the end of the month on the 27th season two so i'm excited about that yes um that's pretty much like the one that's like just just counting down the days yeah so also on that final week of october uh there's jigsaw uh, the next installment in the Saw series. <sighs> Whatever. And then Leatherface, of course, is the week before that on the 20th. <laughs> Sorry, I dozed off for a second. 
<laughs> so yeah, um, those are the ones that I'm pretty excited for for October. Of course, there's like tons of other movies coming out. Uh, a lot of people love watching the AMC like Fear Fest that they do every year. Hmm. Uh, where they just show you know a whole bunch of movies halloween series is usually predominant on that channel and then of course you know um the 13 days of Hall- or how many days is it on freeform is it 13 i can't remember i thought you were talking about like abc family no <laughs> well no that's <laughs> do like the 13 oh they, yeah that's yeah well abc same family thing? is freeform now i have see wow yeah. i don't watch tv <laughs> yeah so it's 13 days of halloween, 13 days of halloween sure. will be coming up where you know all the movies for kids that you know that you can't get on fucking Netflix. Yeah, apparently. exactly. God, are gonna throw be me on a there. bone. I just want to watch Hocus Pocus. Jesus. <laughs> so yeah, that is pretty much all um, that I wanted to talk about as far as Netflix. Is there any like recommendations or anything that you watched or noticed that are on, that's on Netflix right now that people should be watching? Uh, damn it! You know, I just saw. Oh. Well, I saw that um, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning, the prequel with Jordana, Jordana Brewster. I always recommend that one. If you've I never actually seen it, want to watch that again. I only watched it once. I would totally watch that again. I watched it again. once, and it was, like, brutal. Yeah. But, yeah, I would recommend that. Um, I watched Sleepy Hollow. You know, it's it's like a... It's such a silly movie. Because it's, it's not... It's like a horror movie, because it's kind of violent, but it's almost like a child's film, but it's not... It's really just straddling that line, and I'm, I don't know what to think, but I, it's funny, I like it. It's a thing, I don't know, like, the heads are getting cut off, but it's, I don't, remind me, is it gory? Like, do blood splurt out or something? Because I, well, I have see, a feeling there's the just blood this does, line of... There's blood, but when you really see the blood, it's so thick. Like, whenever Tim Burton uses blood in his movies, it's like paint. <laughs> like, when you go back to, like, early 90s, and it's like this ridiculous, thick-ass red paint that they're using for blood... So you don't take it that seriously, but it's just a fun movie. Okay. So if you're in the mood for something Halloween-ish, you know, do it. Yeah. The only recommend- recommendation I have right now is Gerald's Game. Mm. Anybody who's anybody needs to watch this movie immediately. And if you're nobody, just, you know, stick to Hulu. <laughs> I've never read the book. I had no idea something like this came out of Stephen King's mind just the thought process of just watching a woman just be handcuffed to a bed with no resources or any ways of getting help and what to do and then make a movie out of it for 90 minutes maybe even more than 90 minutes i think it was a little longer it was so entertaining wow and so deep and so creepy and and just like i I can't think of what i would do in that situation and it, it was just so interesting to watch her just go through this process of almost starvation and dehydration and just watching her mind just drift and the way that that movie wrapped up i i just was like stephen king like geez how do you sleep at night because the thoughts in your head are just crazy but again for a netflix original movie this was amazing okay so ready i am ready it is time for nominations we're gonna put another movie in the hall of fears some of our best and favorite horror movies in the game and then our dvd barrel will be next these movies are just junk not worth the two dollars you pay for and we'll never speak of them again that's right which one are we doing first we'll start with the good and with the bad all right cool So, I, the scholar, nominated the Halloween anthology movie, Trick or Treat. And I nominated Pumpkinhead, because it's Halloween and I'm basic. (laughs) Um, Okay, so, the reason why that I nominated Trick or Treat, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a very authentic Halloween movie in my opinion, celebrated on... I mean, celebrated. It takes place on Halloween. Um, The movie takes place in one night, which I think almost all good movies take place in one day or evening. Uh, It had a very great cast, good storytelling, and uh, there were some scares in there, but also it was a lot of fun. 
And um, I love, love, love anthology movies. I just think when you have multiple storylines, you get straight to the point. There's no, like, delay in and just getting right where the plot starts and and all that character development is done in very unique ways and done enough to where you like who you see and then you just get you just get it over with and the thing about this one is that it all connected either they they were separate stories but it all took place in the same town and they even intersected which i think continuity wise is brilliant and impressive so and i was fooled there was actually a couple of twists in there that actually got me and i just think that this all around deserves to be one of the best horror movies ever that's really nice rob (laughs) i nominated Pumpkinhead because as i've said many many times it terrified me as a child and even now that damn demon still haunts me the effects are fantastic say what you want about stan winston i don't know lots of people say he's a dick i never met the man but he sure can design some shit um yeah that demon is frightening and it's a really unusual story because i don't know i think it might be based on something but it's just weird and for some reason they decided let's make a movie about it and it works and it's scary and i think it stands the test of time sure their clothes might be a little dated because it's from the 80s but you know it's still terrifying um there's really no visual effects or anything it's it's all practical person in a suit a puppet and it looks real and he fucks them up and I think it's a great movie to watch around the holidays. <laughs> Brings the, <laughs> the family holidays. close together. <laughs> <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just, it's not even, like, he's not the only creepy thing in the movie. The witch that brings the demon to life, you know, she's scary. And the themes behind it, you know, revenge. And that's what I said at the beginning, you know, for every man's sin, a special demon exists. I'm paraphrasing now, but... Um, that was the demon that came to be because he wanted revenge for the murder of his son well the accidentally accidental death of his son and yeah it scares the hell out of me so okay so why don't we go through our checklist okay um we've got good characters do you do you care about the characters in your movie I care about some of them okay um yes some of them i do feel bad for but as i've stated in the past um little girl running out the door was a bitch she was (laughs) dumb um but it was still scary when she got snatched up on the roof (laughs) yeah yeah um what would you say is the like one good scare that you remember well i've mentioned that one before so i won't mention it again but I remember towards the end, a little boy is hiding in the closet, (laughs) and Pumpkinhead is looking in the closet and starts to leave because it doesn't see him. And then he comes back real quick and, like, moves the clothes and gets in his face. I don't know. It scares me. So, here's the thing I don't care that much about most of the characters because they're stupid um the setting is great secluded house in the woods very effective the monster is very scary very effective um and once the monster shows up i do fear for the characters lives i don't want them to get torn apart by this monster but most of them do um the the central theme of revenge and this thing coming out of you you're manifesting this evil I like that. And the man is sort of coming to terms with what he's done. Lance Hendrickson, you know. Um, it's brilliant storytelling. But I'm going to say 
that you win. Yes. Yes. Uh, and here's the thing. You already won when you told me. Yes. I, because I, I love trick or treat. So like I said in the beginning, I picked Pumpkinhead because it's October and I'm basic. No. And so here's the thing. I had a feeling you were going to concede. And yeah. I mean, trick or treat is just... There's it's some just characters so in Trick or Treat good. that I don't feel bad well, for yeah, either. Well, yeah, of course. But of course. it's just, like, just, just everything you said, the anthology of... And I've never seen an anthology quite like this. Everything else is usually separate stories. Exactly. this one, they're woven together, and like we said last week or whatever, Sam brings them together. Mm-hmm. He's always there, just hanging out. So, yes, I love it. The one thing I will say about Trick or Treat... Please do fucking pissed me off yes for years because we were all sitting there waiting for it to come to theaters and then it never fucking did oh my god they played it like one night here in la and then it went straight to video i wish that i had done my research about why it was delayed you have no idea so i I remember the day i found out about this movie actually i was 2006 yeah i was at work and you know i'm just you know i'm closing up and I noticed online there is this trailer. I, you know, saw the poster and this, you know, Sam. And I watched it, and that trailer would just blew me away. Yeah. it just blew me away. It was all the way. There was barely any dialogue in the movie. It was just the creepy music, and they just showed actress after actor after actress. And I was just like, what? What? How are they getting all these people in one movie? And then I watched that trailer so many times, waited and waited and waited, and then it just kept getting delayed. And then on top of that, they would delay it. And then they would tell you how good it is. Like, right. every single time I saw somebody talk about it, it was like, this movie is good, blah, blah, blah. Then it never got a theatrical release. And I was like, are you kidding me with this? Couldn't believe it. What the hell? And it sucked, too, because I had just moved here when they released it. So they released it in 2008 mm-hmm. for one day, I think in September or something. I mean, I couldn't go. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Yeah. So that was the one thing that they did, and I don't know what are they going to do the same shit with the sequel? Like we're like they're talking about. It's a talking really about good it. question. So they've announced that there is a sequel. I don't know if they're currently filming or whatever because they had to put it on hold for Krampus, and and you know people are waiting to hear more news about it because they announced it at a you know a comic I mean a you know convention or whatever, and we're just waiting to get more update. But I don't think we're going to see it anytime soon. I highly doubt we'll see it by next Halloween, to be honest with you. But no, I I'm just it. it's just wishful thinking that it will. So he, let me tell you, when this movie released finally on um, DVD, mm-hmm. I rented the movie, right? And this was really close to Halloween. It was like maybe a week before. I had watched it. I was by myself. I was like, like just smothered in cover i was so into it smothered in yes cover. i was glued to the screen i was just so impressed by the storyline the big twist and everything just got me so good and all i could do was talk about it talk about it then i had um a friend of mine from a neighboring t- city visit with two of his friends and i showed him around seattle because i lived in washington at the time and I was like, hey, we've been walking around forever. I have this amazing movie at my place. You guys need to watch it. And so we went back and I showed it to them. They loved it, right? So this is my second time watching this. Yeah. That very night before they left, I was invited to a Halloween party. Mm. Did I tell you this story? Yes. Okay. But you haven't told them. Okay. So I was invited to this Halloween party. And for the most part, they were just going to sit around and watch movies all day. So I show my friends this movie. They loved it. And I'm like, yay, yay. Everybody loves it. Tell your friends. This movie is awesome. We want a sequel. And so I rush up and I go to the Halloween party. And I know that we're all just going to watch movies. And so I sit down and I'm like, oh, what are we going to watch first? And then my friend next to me he goes, oh, um, you know, the host. He got this movie called Trick or Treat. He heard it was pretty good. I was like, what? I just got through watching that yesterday and today i was like screw it i'm gonna watch it a third time and the thing is this movie's that good it's rewatchable Mm -hmm. and just watching other people react to this movie is fun in itself so much fun so yeah i had watched it three times within a span of two days it became a halloween tradition for me i watch it every year since it came out so yeah trick or treat is so good really good but here's the thing about pumpkin head though so i had never seen this mm-hmm. so i watched it for the first time 
I was actually really impressed. Yeah. I was so surprised with how much thought was put into this movie. First of all, Stan Winston, who knew he was a director, I thought he just did makeup. I think this was his first one. Or maybe, I don't know if he did more, but this was the first one, yeah. I was really impressed. Haggis, that witch, terrifying. (laughs) I don't know how she's living that old, but terrifying. The boy, like, I was just waiting for it to happen because I didn't know what revenge was going to, like, pop out. Yeah. But he was paying way too much attention to that boy, so I was like, oh, it must be him, right? Here are the things that I thought was impressive. The makeup, for sure. The practical effects of this monster. We got to see full body more than once, which I thought was super impressive. Um, the way that he was killing people, yeah. it was like taunting, like ha ha type, like I'm stronger than you. It wasn't just like a demon going for the kill. This pumpkin head monster looked like it had a, like half a brain to like do some really creepy shit. Yeah. He was sneaky. Like, I don't know what it was. He, that girl who got captured, the, the one, okay. He took her pressed her up against the window and was like ha ha look at this tell your friends i'm here i ain't going nowhere all you bitches about to die and then popped her in the window i was like usually a demon will just take you out you know they're they're in for the hunger the kill they're not there to fuck with you one of the kills he took him up top a high ass tree and and held her and was like (laughs) ha 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 and then dropped her on a fucking rock Amaze balls! Mm-hmm. I loved it. I just remembered the part because after he snatches little little girl, he's carving into her head. Yes, the cross. Yes, and she's like praying and stuff, and it's like, what a slap in the face! It's I I like, just I just thought I I had no idea this monster was gonna be so, like unique in in a way of just like killing. Mm-hmm. The other thing was is that yeah the 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 kill that brought on the revenge was was very accidental there were so many innocent bystanders that had to die for this man and he was such an asshole too but here's what was so shocking about it he actually came to terms with what he did he like did a flip reversal on his personality and actually was like I deserve to well not I deserve to die but he really was like taking heavy ownership about what was going on I just thought that was crazy but what I also thought was cool was that they didn't even give these people a chance to breathe. Like, the minute they arrived at this cabin, it was like, it's time to lay down the law. Like, they were against each other about who was right and who was wrong. And then Pumpkin Head came to get them. I just was so impressed. But the biggest thing was the fact that when you ask for this favor, you have to feel and see all the kills Mm-hmm. That you and I think that's such justice because it's so easy for people to wish death upon somebody, mm-hmm. but when you actually witness it and see it happening, it changes your whole perspective. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was a brilliant touch on the whole story, and which obviously is the reason why he tried to stop it at you know at the end of the day. So he kind of became the villain slash hero, but. I, I just thought it was really impressive. I was actually pretty shocked. And for an 80s movie, yeah, pretty good. It's really good. I don't know if it would survive today's horror, though. I feel like it would. You think it would? Yeah, because all the things you just said. Well, like, yeah, I mean, for like heavy people, horror fans, I think yes. But to I mean, go back to the days of no visual effects, a lot of people are very unhappy with visual effects. I'm either way as long as it looks good but yeah this movie it doesn't look like a robot it looks like a monster no it doesn't it moves like a monster um with the combination of the performer and the puppeteer it looks very real and i think it's it's still very scary Mm -hmm. so you know it might not scare everyone but i think if you're looking for a creature feature it's gonna scare you yeah um, one thing that I tried to notice throughout the movie, apparently one of the Wallace kids is Mayan Bialik. Blossom. 
was she? Yeah, she was one of the kids. That's weird. Yeah. I I couldn't really make her out out of the kids, but I looked at IMDb and apparently she was one of the kids. I thought that was kind of cool. That's so funny. Everyone does horror. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. Well. Okay. Are we good? Trick or treat. Trick or Hall treat. Of fears, October. Hall of fears. Yes. 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 It was always going to be that way. <laughs> I just wasn't going to, like, roll out the record. No, carpet, and here's you know? the thing. I really... Th- that's the thing. I was like, I wonder how much he's going to put into this because I was impressed by Pumpkinhead. So if he really believes this deserves to be in there, fight for it because it was a good movie. Mm-hmm. It's not that I don't think it deserves to be in there. Yeah, it's like, of course. Once you said Trick or Treat, I was like, well, <laughs> let me just pick one of my Halloween movies. And <laughs> but this is also, to me, this is why I like doing this because regardless what movie we pick, it's also great to just talk more thoroughly about the movies that we do really really love regardless you know and like yeah Pumpkinhead didn't make it but now everybody knows that this movie is actually good and if you haven't seen it check it out I mean again for the 80s I I thought it did a brilliant job so all right all right so now it's time for the deadly DVD barrel movie bullshit yeah these movies you'll find in a barrel bin at your nearest electronic store not worth the shelf space which one did you nominate this month i nominated the remake of night of the demons starring shannon elizabeth <laughs> and our favorite final girl <laughs> monica Kina. what i completely forgot she was in this movie and then to have a love interest of Edward, Edward Furlong. Furlong. What a pairing that was. <laughs> oh. I did not I didn't get that. That yeah. was so weird. That's not whatever. So what did you pick? I picked the uh follow up to the um breakout hit of Blair Witch, the Blair Witch Two Book of Shadows. Or book of shadows blair witch 2 however you want to title it because they had this backwards theme in the movie so you could you could pretty much say the title whichever way but yeah that's my choice this month got it so why did you choose night of the demons the remake the remake because it's a piece of shit (laughs) so do you do you think that the movie sucks like as far as like the story and everything or is it just this remake that's horrible i am going to try and do something that i don't usually do i'm going to try not to compare it to the original thank you it's a remake yes it is we know that it's just not a good movie remakes can be done well also remakes should be sort of needed or requested this is not a this is not one of those things we didn't need this at all and then you gave us hot trash cold trash i'm sorry yeah cold freezing depths of the ocean trash so the acting is not good no from anyone it's not you know I think Shannon actually plays her part. Hold up. <laughs> we'll get to that. Okay. I don't think she did a good job. Um, I did not appreciate any of the makeup. Um, it just, they look like, I mean, they just look like recycled demons that I've seen from other entries. Or some of them didn't even look like demons. They looked like, I don't know lizard people, and it was there just... was one girl who had her face peeled off, so she was pretty much just like a oh, bloody skeleton. The skeleton. Yeah, and I think she was the booby one too, yeah. wasn't she? The booby one. Okay, she was the booby one. Um, you know, and of course they did recreate the sequence where the actress is like my whiskers, and she puts it in her nipple, her lipstick. But yeah. then they tried to add this new feature where it comes out of her vaginal cavity and it's like why why did we want to add that i mean it was just nonsense and to be fair the only reason that i watched this movie is because of what was his name oh what's his name 
Michael something, the only hot actor in the movie. I know who you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was in the Scorpion King sequels that I didn't yes, watch. I remember him from one of the Bring It On sequels. That's Yeah, he played on one of the... I, <laughs> yeah, I just he, was like, he's hot. Yeah. Sure, I'll watch it. And then it was just garbage and everyone was garbage. And yeah. So, um, nothing scary is happening. The whole mystery behind the house being cursed or like, you know, there was the past seance and it's not good. The ending is so bad. Like, (laughs) I just don't like her final line when she... I mean, her line is so stupid. Yeah. Keep your mouth shut, first of all. But... Uh, where did you get that bungee cord? Where, where where did that come from? Where did that come from? Well, I think what she did, she took the same rope and she made a knot for her waist and then made another knot for her head. Oh, okay. So that's not going to choke you? Apparently it didn't because the the rope around her waist was more closer to the window. So it caught her before. I don't know. No. It, it's too physics for me. This but is like, not, it's not even physics. That doesn't. <laughs> you want to test that out, Rob? No, it's not about testing it out. I'm just it, explaining. I'm just explaining what we saw is what I'm. What I saw is that it doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work. It would not work. It was stupid, so stupid. <laughs> so here's the thing about Night of the Demons. I remember from the original that it was very gory and very sex based. '80s had no problem with gratuitous sex. People would get naked all the time practically if you weren't having sex you weren't gonna die and so if they wanted the body count to be high everybody had to die or you know have sex or drink or do whatever so there was tons of it there was tons of you know you know sex innuendos in there and just people hooking up and so in 2009 that sort of process has died down. Like, you barely even see nudity in movies, let alone horror movies anymore. It's just something that isn't appealing to an audience at that time. So remaking Night of the Demons not necessarily needs to be made with gratuitous sex, but it takes the core reason why the 80s version was popular. I mean, how can you do a movie without it? And the one sex scene that they did have in there, like, they were both fully clothed. Super awkward. Like, Home Dude didn't even have his shirt off. And I think... I know! I think it's probably because, like, they didn't want him shirtless for the rest of the movie. I mean, he could have put his shirt back on. But Mm -hmm. it, it was just, like, such a waste of an opportunity. And again, the type of party that was being thrown in this remake asked for it and they didn't give you anything it was such a weak ass party all they did was do drugs dance one girl flashed her boobs and that was pretty much as far as the rated r stuff is concerned when it came to the kills yeah we've seen it before but if you're gonna remake something you need to do a step up from the original or change it Mm -hmm. they decided not to change it so they needed to step it up and they didn't do it they just rehashed it for this particular generation. And I don't even think they really gave them anything to look forward to. They didn't. No. I, but like I said earlier, I think at the time in 2009, they made an excellent choice casting Shannon Elizabeth as Angela. I mean, unless you can think of somebody else. Why? Well, from her scary movie and American Pie theme, I think she Mm. is like somebody that a lot of teen guys know and think who are sexy. And to be the head of this party, I thought it was genius casting. You know who I think would have been better? Catherine Isabel. Catherine, but mm, I mean, yeah, she's a. I would have picked Danielle Harris before Catherine, to be honest. Or her. Yeah, or her. They're both, I think, Shannon Elizabeth, I think she has a lot of good moments in different movies. But this movie, everybody is like still, stale, dry cornbread. Okay. And um, I, I don't think she did a good job. Okay. I don't think it was an inspired choice. I think that she's done some horror movies, sure. Everybody knows who she is. But I think the other two that we've mentioned would have been much better choices because they're both very attractive women. Mm -hmm. I think that they both pull off being evil much better. Okay. You know, once the demon takes over. Yeah. I think 
that they would have been much better choices. All right. They're much better Scream Queens. If you want like an iconic star to, because you're remaking this, so it's like you should put someone there who is, I don't know. Yeah. But they didn't do that. So Okay. Well, I again, I agree with you. This movie is trash. But we've got Blair Witch 2 Book of Shadows. Now, I didn't like this movie because they didn't give us any likable characters. I thought the process of even trying to figure out what was going on with these people was just wasted it was it was basically they just all seemed like people with their heads cut off just running around like they didn't know what they were doing i just thought the execution of this movie just was all over the place it didn't seem structured or organized there was no explanation and then that's the other thing the way that the movie wrapped up it was too easy like none of them had a chance whatsoever and from all the visuals that they gave us throughout this entire movie, all they had to do was just say, look at the camera. You killed those people. If you don't remember, that's on you. We got it on video. You did it. The legend lives. You guys go to jail. And that's about it. That's too easy. I don't want to sit there for 90 minutes just so a witch can alter camera security footage and call it a day and say that they did it. It wasn't a twist. It wasn't something to be surprised at. It was just an easy way out to just write a, a terrifying ending that didn't end well for the good people. I didn't think that she altered the camera footage. I think that she altered their memories, and they did do it. They killed her. No, they no, no, no. They did do it, but what I'm saying is, is that having us watch them think that they didn't and then for the last five minutes reveal oh look at that your memories were tampered with you guys don't know what you're talking about it was all just all of that illusion that they kept seeing with the bridge falling even though it didn't and the dogs even though it didn't everybody's running around rake naked the tree being there but not being there it just i just thought it was just too easy of a wrap up to you know like they're trying to call it like it's a simple twist but yet i mean it, it's just too easy oh yeah your memories has been erased it's been put in some else and you guys act i just think that's kind of lazy and come you know having it follow up past the first one i just don't think the two go well together yes if you try to do something different that's fine but i just i don't know i just didn't like it I, I just think it's kind of boring and it's a little lazy and that's why I'm nominating it for this month. I can agree with you that it really doesn't seem to be connected to the first film. The biggest difference for me is that the original was found footage and this one is not. Sure, they have the camera footage, the security camera, whatever. It's not, it's not the same thing. Um, so I guess they play on that idea of it's the found footage and look, this is what you're doing on camera, but I actually like this movie better than the original. You already know I don't like the original. Yeah. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the original either. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm glad I saw it, but I mean, yeah. I could get my 80 minutes back or whatever long it was. Um, this isn't a great movie, but I liked it better than the original, probably because I just like film better than found footage so because it wasn't found footage this because it wasn't found footage um i liked the little redhead that you know is dead in the closet i don't know how she died but she's just dead there um so you know she was likable enough to me the other ones were okay um i thought it was creepy that they all turned on each other and they were freaking out and but it's not a great movie but i don't think it's hot trash i don't think it's cold <laughs> trash either I actually don't mind the idea of them sort of, you know, trying to figure out what's going on, blame each other, you know, going against each other, trying to, you know, yeah. get everything. But but that's the thing. I wish that what we saw was real. 
I don't want them to just erase the entire movie and say, nope, this is not how it happened. You guys actually killed everyone. I mean, it'd be, I mean, maybe I missed something, but I mean, is Blair Witch known to just give you all of these illusions and think that you're doing something when you're not? And why hasn't this happened to anybody else? First of all, the movie opens up where obviously the town of, what, what's the town called? I forget, Burksville or something. Oh, I don't know. So, I mean, clearly after the first movie, movie it plays on this meta form format that everybody you know knows about this town and they're obsessed with Blair Witch so now everybody rushes to this town to see it for themselves clearly they're not the first people to go into the woods and look for the Blair Witch so I don't know if it's because of that specific spot but this hasn't happened to anyone else throughout I mean there were multiple tours walking through those woods and yet this is the only story that happens involving Blair Witch and you know these deaths done in this ritual way I I just find it a little odd that it hasn't happened until now after so much fame of the town and they don't really explain just I guess the Blair Witch and how she operates and why all of a sudden everybody whatever they see is just non-existent I mean you might as well just say oh it was all a dream I I think that to me is just all a dream (laughs) so I mean yeah I I just didn't really find it I mean I'm watching it. I would say the only thing that was kind of creepy was, you know, again, the girl in the closet, just trying to figure out where she was. And they open it and she's like there. But again, I just really didn't dig anything else. Okay. So, I don't know. Um, Your pick... (laughs) <laughs> I mean, look, so I already said that I don't hate your movie and I'm not really, I'm not inclined to feel hatred for it. Yeah. I just, I don't. I really don't. I'm not trying to be difficult. No, no, no. I it's get just, it. It was I, just I think whatever. because I, well, because I do agree that Night of the Demons remake is, is bad. Um, so is mine. But I mean, because we have I a mean, consistency. Yours of, was at least like... <laughs> We can say with honesty, it was just a cash grab and they wanted to make money. I don't think that they wanted to make money with this remake. I thought they just had some time to kill. (laughs) No, fair enough. They had no aspirations for this movie. They didn't. Okay. No, um, I'm no, I will. I will say that this one goes to Night of the Demons remake because it's called trash. And my hate is strong. Um, I think there are fans of this second one. Really? Um, you mean the remake? Of the, no, not the remake. No, no. Oh, the, of, the Blair Witch oh, 2. I, yeah. I think there is more of a fan base with this one than Night of the Demons. I don't think I've ever heard anybody say they like this remake. I definitely think that after they came out with the sequel, even though it uh, didn't perform well and it wasn't reviewed well people wanted a third one yeah they really wanted a third one and then it just never happened yeah so i mean of course they did it was it a remake was it a reboot recently it was a i think it was a sequel okay so no so i guess they did get i haven't seen it either but you know i love their advertising scheme you know they 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 advertise it as a different movie they even had a different title and then all of a sudden, bam, at a at the Comic-Con, they just was like, ha-ha, tricked you. It's actually all based on the whole mythology. So I think it's a continuation. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, so Night of the Demons remake. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Deadly DVD Barrel. Also. Yes. I don't know if they're still doing this. I think the last article I saw was from last year, but they are planning on remaking Pumpkinhead really don't know how i feel about it but the people who are involved have said that they want to do practical like as much as possible they want to do practical effects and they said that they're you know when people see this movie you're going to know it's pumpkinhead they don't want to like drastically change his appearance they want it to be pumpkinhead but they they want to reboot the series and um i don't know how those pumpkinhead sequels I don't know what they did. I'm actually... They all went cur- straight to video. Well, what I mean is, I'm like, story-wise, was it all just like, yeah, let's get revenge, resurrect him, yada, yada. I mean, it's not the same. This In the second one, it's like, it's almost like someone comes back from the dead and gets his own revenge, but he comes back as Pumpkinhead. Okay. Well, 
this remake has such a huge opportunity to get some social commentary in. If they keep the revenge <gasps> aspect, oh my god! If you bring in some of the shit that happens in our world today, and people who really want revenge and really understand what it is that they're asking for, this is a huge oh opportunity. God. You hear that, Hollywood? You listening to these ideas? Yes. Rob needs story credit. I'm actually paycheck. Because here's the thing, regardless of the whole monster aspect, again, the story could go anywhere. Yeah. And updating it for this today's audience, you have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they think about this and not just make it a cash grab to just be gross. Mm -hmm. Put some story into it. I think that would, I think that's awesome. I think you're absolutely right. And I think that they kind of have to do that. Yes. If you want to actually make it go with the times and make it that much more horrifying because I mean, it's kind of terrible to say it but it's like when you relate it to things that are actually happening especially in the times that we're living in that makes it that much scarier you have an actual physical monster manifesting because of some crazy ass bullshit that's going on so Rob we should probably just you know write the screenplay for I know why are we I just need to learn how to write I, oh, I can write so yeah. but yeah, yeah my only thought was because like I said, for every man's sin, there exists a special demon. And I thought, oh, what if they did a series where it's like you had the other special demons for all the other sins? Mm -hmm. I would love to see that. Yeah. That would be the only thing. But I really like your idea. Thank you. Thank so. you. All right. So before we get to the closing of our show with our week's uh, bitch, really, I do want to give a huge heads up for next week's episode. We would like to concentrate this month on the idea of fear. Uh, horror comes in many different forms, and you know, fear is definitely one of them. Next week, we want to concentrate on the scariest moments in horror. But if possible, also share some scary moments in life. I think when we did our review on uh, it last week, it kind of inspired us that there are a lot of stories and things that may have happened to us, real or not, that are creepy. And um, I want to give everyone who's listening an opportunity to share any kind of ghost story, haunted houses in your neighborhood, any kind of spooky story that has happened to you and email us and share us your story and we want to hear as many as you can give us and yeah. we'll read as much as we can from all of our listeners mm -hmm. on our show and just have it jam-packed with some spooky stories yeah and if you don't have something that happened to you maybe it happened to your mom maybe it happened to your sister maybe it happened to your grandma it's an urban legend passed down through family exactly if you yeah. have a story that you know can make us tingle <laughs> send it our way yeah so We'd love um, to read it that email address is fearbias at gmail.com we'll definitely post this on our page and on instagram twitter you can tweet us comment on instagram if you want or on facebook or again just email us and uh yeah i just wanted to bring that up okay so bitch really of the week Bitch, really, you remade Night of the Demons and it sucked. <laughs> no, we have to go deeper than that. Do you have one or should I just I got do one. the one? Okay. So, trick or treat. I don't remember the character's name, but the one that was the angel. I don't know what her deal was. Oh, I remember her. She was on Dead Like Me. I like she her. Was. She was. funny. That show was meh. Oh, it went okay, down. Papa. Okay. It went down real quick. It went down real quick. Like, it started out good and then it went. I like that show. Okay, anyways. Anyways. That's why, anyways. That's why it canceled. That TV movie that they made. Oh, terrible. This week on Bitch Really. She was a bitch. <laughs> That's all I remember. And she, I just don't know what her deal was. What do you think is going to oppress a boy? Oh, I don't know. Let's be mean to this other girl and terrorize her. I mean, you know what? You guys deserve to die, okay? <laughs> you deserve to die. I didn't feel bad for them at all. Because... <laughs> You cry wolf once, I'm not going to listen to you the next time. So, bitch, really, you probably shouldn't be mean to other kids. They're not always carry, but sometimes they might leave you on the beach in an elevator. <laughs> um, 
just on a non supernatural point of view, to even go deep down in that area, right by yourself. I mean, anything could have happened with that shady elevator that they were riding on. Anybody could have got hurt. No one's around you. It's Halloween. That's when the freaks come out. Like, bitch, don't you have anything better to do with your time? Like, you, I mean, that is super risky. You really put thought into this prank. And it's like, you don't have something to do. That's a lot of, like, brain power on a, on a, on a defenseless girl yeah, who like, just loves Halloween. Just throw a spider at her. Not a real one. <laughs> But yeah, throw a fake spider at her or something. I don't know. Like, reach from behind a door with a creepy hand. That's a prank. And then, ha ha ha, I'm a bitch. (laughs) I scared you. All right, now I can go on with my life. But you you just went out of your way. So sad. You're whack. So sad. So So yeah, kids, be careful out there. Don't go to these secluded, locked up places by yourself without no help around you. It's Mm -hmm. super dangerous. But yeah, I agree with you on that bitch really, though. Yes. All right, so that is one of many, many episodes we have for this um, month of October, and we're excited to do the rest of the week. Again, get those stories in. Email us as much as you want, and um, yeah, thank you for listening once again. Thank you, guys, and I won't go deep like Jimmy Kimmel, but be nice to each other and love each other. I feel like it was time to remind everyone we're better than the garbage that happens around us don't be evil take care of each other and we'll catch you next week on bitch i ain't scared <laughs>